So we have seen and analyzed uh, the three case studies in the history of media for science and uh, the technological and uh, social ad advance evolution they had. <coughs> and uh, now we come to our status quo, to our overview of uh, all these things. Um, media, As we have seen, media architecture uh, has managed to reinvent the urban space through media architecture. And uh, the impact uh, and its impact of um, architectural theory through practical media facade systems, its departure of imagery from the boundaries towards dynamic creative, uh, based on building management and external information. And uh, we have also seen the practical challenges of large scale displays, of urban planning display, viewing design in public spaces. And last but not least, we have seen the sustainable display and image data systems that are specified by architects, which are maintainable over the lifetime of a media facade. So um, after this analysis, we have asked ourselves some questions regarding this language communication thing. So how do companies uh, find the language to express their brands to the urban environment, which is like, uh, which kind of language do these companies use to, to interact their, uh, their brand to the urban environment? And the second question we set ourselves was, how do they develop an individual symbolic language? Well, um, after setting ourselves these questions, we have uh, come up with a a small profiling tool to find out which kind of language these companies, how these companies brand themselves to the urban landscape. And uh, we came up with this metric tool, as we said, which uh, on the first axis we have the urban attributes, such as interactivity, how do people perceive and how much interaction there is between the media facade and the user and the space. The second is the networking. Uh, is there any kind of uh, linking, linking the people to the urban space? And uh, th a third of all is sustainability. Fourth is communication. Is there any kind of communication, letting the people communicate between the media facade and the public space? The second axis we have the identity, marketing, individuality, and lifestyle. Everyone knows what identity is, as we explained before, marketing, of course, individuality to stand out, and lifestyle, as we will indicate further. So in the, in the first case study, we have Chanel Tower, where uh, my colleague explained that um, it is a kind of um, marketing, or more, more of it, um, it's uh, not only just marketing, it's also identity and individuality, but the main focus of it is lifestyle. They want to accentuate the lifestyle of this area, the public space, and the brand in itself. So the brand communication strategy was to emboss the lifestyle. And the urban attributes, the urban scale it has, it's communication of the lifestyle, which means, um, according to our tool, the Chanel Tower matches the scheme profile of consuming. Then we have the second case study, which is the Dexia Tower. And as my colleague also explained, it has a sort of brand communication strategy is to be individual, to stand out alone into that space and as a brand, as the architecture, brand of architecture, brand architecture, the corporate architecture. And its urban attribute was to create this kind of individuality through its communication, which means that um, um, the Dexia Tower um, has more of it, though, more interactivity. So in an in individual interactivity matches the profile of personalization. And then um, Green Peaks has as well sustainability and a sort of interactivity to its, to its urban environment, but most of it it's trying to create a communication. And 
and also tries to embody an identity as a brand to the urban space, which matches the profile of interpersonal media facade. There are, of course, much more profiles and schemes, and of course, this uh, this categorizing thing is uh, our point of view. It is all just a point of view, and uh, it was also quite objective through our analysis, of course. But um, um, we must not forget that uh, this is just uh, this tool thing is just to be able to put the media facade to, f to find out what kind of language they use. But there are much more factors that we have to consider when we come to the design of a media fa facade uh, and the scale of the public space, which is that the, public the urban space is nowadays a public stage, which uh, embodies their entertainment architecture. And this entertainment architecture has some do's and don'ts. For example, in the stage, you have to note your audience and communicate with visual literacy to create a visual magnet and to maintain, most of all, maintain identity by avoiding contradictions. So um, by m this identity thing, this is the most hard issue because the problem of adapting your self-image to the public space, to the public image, leads to a sensory overload entertainment. This is what we really have to consider when we do media facade design, or it's not just doing some fancy graphic uh, urban screen. It's also to consider your audience and uh, how, how um, you will uh, adapt your image to this uh, what, and how you want the people to perceive it. So what is your point of view? And we set ourselves a question which you could possibly answer to us. Can you think of media architecture examples in your country? And in your opinion, how did it affect the public space in each case? So uh, we have to consider um, how the media architecture um, you have to uh, objectively and subjectively influence the, your, your urban space. And uh, how did it affect it? Is it? Did it make the urban space uh, more popular or lively or even um, create a higher status of lifestyle in your area? And uh, here are references uh, which you can check for a presentation and uh, we would like to thank you if you have any questions you can uh, send us an email or also any answers to our questions we would like to um, receive them thank, thank you. you very much